Hello guys, uh, now I'm in my house in Nova Scotia in Canada, um, actually, no, sorry, Guysborough in Nova Scotia in Canada, okay, because I'm on holiday here at the moment and I'm honestly thinking of moving here, so we have here a, uh, if you didn't see my unboxing video, please watch it because you guys really need to support this channel, you want to see more content, the best thing to do to motivate me is watch all my videos and post a comment and like them and even turn on notifications because to be honest one of my big things is motivation and I've been having a problem with it recently because I've been getting very down due to my lifestyle in the UK and honestly I'd argue I was quite depressed and I just had no motivation to make videos but I've just got this brand new figure which is why you should check out the unboxing and we're going to look at it today now before we get onto the figure let's take a look at the packaging now this is a gorgeous box I usually don't do stuff like this but I received this figure and I was unboxing it when I got it in the shop and, and I thought, wait a minute, this is a perfect opportunity to do a proper full unboxing because there's a few unboxing videos on, the, on YouTube about this thing, not loads. And of course, one of the things about my channel is I aim to be unique. So I like to give my own opinions and everyone's opinion is unique, you see, and you can probably see me in the background. Hello. Now... Okay, so enough about garbling. Let's size of the box. Uh, here is a seven inch Freddy Krueger, uh, particularly the reboot one, which is pretty short, as you can see. Uh, the box is not that much bigger than he is, which is quite nice, <sighs> in my opinion. Um, now, uh, onto some more details of the box. Now, I did not pick this up. If you did not watch my unboxing video, and for some reason you don't want to, which I don't know why you would not want to, because it's quite insulting, really, that you people don't watch my videos. But still, I did not get it for this price. Uh, this here is a price of 103 Canadian dollars 95 cents. Uh, that's not what I got it for. This thing was sat in the window for ages, which is why the box is a bit yellowed, as you can see. Right, this is quite faded. Uh, the colour's a bit off. Whereas if you look at this side, it's quite nice and clear. Uh, I actually picked this up. Now, originally, the guy, Truman, at his own independent comic store, Lost Realms Comics, um, in a small town in Niganish, in Nova Scotia, in Canada, uh, he had this thing sat on the window for ages. And he was going to originally do a deal of 85 Canadian dollars. I did not have that. I had some 65 Canadian dollars. I said, well, I've only got 65. I'll do it. And he thought about it for a few seconds. He thought, yeah, you know what? I'll sell it to you. So, great shout out to him. And his comic book store is not traditional because... Well, for one thing, it's independent, uh, which around Iniganish, which is the town, there are a lot of independent businesses, which is great, because you know I have a thing for supporting independent businesses, especially when it comes to music venues and bands, even though I don't see many of them just due to time and all that. However, um, his comic book store actually sells games. They have board game nights and RPG games like Dungeons & Dragons, Warhammer... And card games like Magic. I know a lot of you people have heard of Magic. Um, probably not on, Probably not people on this channel, but a lot of people out there, like geeky guys and all that, who like their games, will have heard of Magic. So he sells quite a few things like that. He sells the Magic cards and whatnot. And the main neck of figures he has, it, it, well, it, including this, were some Lord of the Rings ones. But I saw this one, and I really was struggling on whether or not I wanted it. Not because I didn't like the way it looked. I loved it. It's because of the, the price. But obviously, you know, Truman hit me up with a nice deal. And I've used pretty much all my money... Honestly, I argue it's worth it. Uh, this is a great figure to be to behold. Um, it it's great looking at it. I mean, I'm looking at it right now to, on my bed because my bed's right behind me, and this thing is fantastic. So um, before we get on to the actual figure, uh, we're going to look at the box because I have rambled on enough. Includes Baby Otashi figure, as you can see, Kaiju Otashi. Got a nice. Um, I don't know what the military is called in Pacific Rim, but there here's the symbol for them. Uh, the Marine, the uh, Rangers, as it were, the Jaeger Rangers. I'm not sure. Please post in the comments if you know, um, because I've forgotten. It's been a while since I've seen Pacific Rim, yet I remember all the fight scenes like it was yesterday. I've seen it. Got a nice picture of the old girl here. We're going to turn to the top. Uh, also, notice the window in there. I'll show you what's in there in a minute. Uh, Warner Brothers, you know, all the legendary pictures and copyright mumbo jumbo, but with a big logo of Pacific Rim there. And I must say, and of all the logos I've seen, that is hands down one of the best logos. Now, if you look inside, you can actually see the background of the scene there. And here's inside. Now, yes, I'm using an old Indiana Jones DVD set to film. I like Indiana Jones. It's a good set of 80s movies. 
with the exception of uh, The Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, that was a 2009 film, but all the others were made around the 80s. Uh, and I, you know me, if you don't know, I like 80s things. I love the 80s stuff. Vintage Ken of Ghostbusters, Transformers, Ken of Aliens, the movies like Nightmare on Elm Street and all that. I love 80s. So it's quite a modern film, but it's still great. Uh, now, we have the picture of the big girl herself, again with the logo. On the other side is same, but with a different pose. Just pretty cool. <laughs> and as you can see, there are some biohazard symbols along with the word kaiju. Sorry, I've, got a bit of, I've come down with a bit of a bug at the moment, a bit of an illness. Uh, now, I don't know if these white these white marks feel like part of the deco, but as you can see, this is just League of Mumbo Jumbo, NECA, Real Toys, Legendary Pictures, Warner Brothers, Legendary and all that, and the logo made in China, and all that. So, and the barcode for scanning the product. Oh, it's a bit... It's getting a bit sunny in here, now, in here now. And here's the meat and potatoes of the box. The back. I'm actually just going to... Ang Ugh, I can't really angle. Uh, right, so I'll get you up close since... Category 4 Kaiju. Uh, hold on. Uh, Otashi. Interchangeable tongue, as you can see. So you get the... As the uh, super important reviews like to call it the Hokalugi. The baby, uh, over 30 points of articulation and a fully articulated tail. And I must say, that tail, excuse my language right now, the tail alone is fucking awesome. Believe me, it's quite technical for what it is, especially around the triclaw section. I will explain that in a bit. Sorry, my camera got a bit funny with the focus then. And of course, you got some legal mumbo jumbo on the bottom. Okay, so that's enough for the box. And this is a pretty nice box. This is a deluxe figure, but really the word deluxe does not do the scale justice. Now, before we get on to the big girl herself, we are going to take a look at the accessories. So here is the spit. So I've got a tongue on there. And if I just zoom in here quite a bit, this thing has some fantastic detailing. Now, the winged version actually comes with the feeler tongue, which is used to find newts in the underground section. Uh, now, this figure was made before NECA were doing ultimate figures, but had this girl be an ultimate figure, I can imagine she would have basically been both the figures in one. She would have come with this, the other tongue, both the small tongues, uh, both the alternate heads, and alternate set of arms for the wings, and even the tail. So really, yeah, the figure would definitely be over a hundred Canadian, over a hundred dollars. I know a lot of my people who watch my videos are American, so it'd be over a hundred US dollars because you'd be getting so much friggin' stuff with it. This figure alone was flipping quite expensive in its own way. Uh, as you can see, now the only problem with this is installing it is a bit of a problem because it's painted. I'll show you what I did with the other tongue, the retracted one, in a minute. It's very similar to this, but it just doesn't have the, the, the loogie, as it were. And it's very nicely painted. It could have just easily made this smooth. Sorry, not painted, sculpted. Very, very nice with all these little lines and like it's actually fire and liquid. Now, I don't own any of these products that I'm about to mention, but this is very similar to a piece you would get with Bandai Tomoshination's SH Figure Arts. Because they do a lot of um, accessories like this, because they are Japanese figures, um, and they do a lot of stuff like this with theirs. And I, it seems that with this Kaiju, NECA has taken a heavy amount of cues uh, from that, which is great, because it brings you one step closer to an import figure. And NECA has come leaps and bounds over the years with their products. Uh, Pacific Rim was actually an experimental line. They originally did the Jaegers and cheapened them down and sculpted and paint and detail to get them into Walmart. It didn't work, so they're going back and doing some of them as ultimates. But here's the Hokalugi. However, the Kaijus, they did not skip with the Kaijus, except for Knifehead. The first version of, the first version of Knifehead they did was a bit crap. You can consider it a juvenile one. Now, speaking of juvenile, here is the baby. And this thing is fucking cute. I love looking at this thing. It's got a great amount of detail for its size. Um... It's got its underdeveloped feet right there near my finger. And this thing, look at my finger, right? If I just sit, up, sit him on here. Yeah, <laughs> he's tiny. Now, let's compare him to a 7-inch figure, because I know most of you will do that. Uh, yeah, he's absolutely tiny. Now, so it's got lots of detail. And what I love is, I love looking at this thing because it's so small. And it's the detail as well. The detail on this thing is fantastic for its size. Not just in sculpt, but paint. Look at all these little dots here, these bioluminescent dots. They're fantastic. Uh, you've got little folded up wings here, which are underdeveloped. Now, a bit of a shout out to the movie here. This thing died because in, in the movie, it's his mum got cut in half, right? 
So this thing was crawling. This they went to some people went to salvage the organs to sell on the black market and make a fuck ton of profit because that's what people have done since kaijus have come to earth, like bone powder, the skin lice, bone marrow, friggin' all sorts from them. They'll harvest anything from them and then fucking sell it. <laughs> and um, so they found this thing in their backs and it comes out. Without, with the umbilical cord still attached or not, if you didn't know, these things were grown and they're basically biological weapons uh, from invaders, that, you know, from terraformers. So, these things wanted... This thing came out, and you think it's dead because it gets strangled by the umbilical cord here, which is, you know, this wrapped around its neck. Obviously, this actual long cord part is a separate piece that is glued in, which is quite a smart move, really. Um, however, Ron Perlman throws his knife in its little nose, uh, I'll show you the nose on Big Mummy in a minute. Uh, and basically, ooh, uh, you think it's dead, but then this thing suddenly springs back up, uh, swallows him whole, missing one of his shoes. Because uh, a lot of people in the review said they need a shoe to go with this thing. <laughs> and the rubber one, they say about a 1 6 scale shoe. Uh, outside the box reviews does that. Now, when I saw that, I burst out laughing because I just found it I found a reference hilarious. Um, so swallows him, but his shoe flies out of his mouth. Uh, whilst in the process of swallowing them, just lands on the floor. Now, in the after credit scene, because this thing had died at that point, it basically strangled itself after trying to go after the new, uh, yeah, so it died. Because uh, Ron Perlman actually said his lungs hadn't fully formed, because this thing is only a baby. Probably underdeveloped as well. Probably premature birth, in a way. So, Ron Perlman cuts his way out of its stomach, and sticks his head out and goes, where's my goddamn shoe? First time I saw that, because one of my mates back in school told me, <sighs> I mean, like, high school. And it was friggin' hilarious. I, I, I had to go watch it for myself. And when I did, I found it hilarious. So, no. That's a bit of lore and story of the, ba the baby. Now, this thing has some articulation. You wouldn't think so, would you? His head is on a swivel. And his shoulders can swivel. So, you can have him looking left and right, very strangely. Or you can have him go, rawr, like he's playing with the other babies. Uh, weird logic, I know. But mostly, you're going to be having him... Like that. And that's a good pose for him. Uh, just going to zoom in there. No, track. And, you know, if you're doing some stop motion, you could just have your arms swivel backwards and forwards like he's walking whatnot. Keep in mind, your umbilical cord, you could just say it ripped off. Now, let's go on to the meat and potatoes of the set. The big bitch. No, not the Xenomorph Queen. The Otashi. Uh, she's um, not one to stand the moment. I've... Unfortunately, because this is such, this is actually my biggest necker figure, believe it or not. This is the first time I have ever spent money on a expensive necker figure. Um, and by that I mean, because usually the ones I get are around twenty to thirty pack great, uh, British pounds in the UK. <laughs> but this thing I bought in Canada. Now this thing actually has a price in the UK of sixty pounds. Uh, pounds is currency, uh, like pound coins. Um, my wallet's here. I will show you some British money. Uh, because I do have some spare. I don't have any Canadian dollars as I used them all upon this thing. So here it is. This is basically what we would use in the UK. Now imagine. Now this is ten pounds. So imagine this is ten dollars, a ten dollar note. But as you can see, it says ten pounds. I imagine six of these would go towards her. So that's a bit of education for you people. Because I, I want to make my video videos educational in a way that I could possibly can. So that's British currency, pounds. And this this would probably weigh a bit. <laughs> Now, if you didn't watch my unboxing video, the first thing that stood about me about, about this old girl was her weight. She is quite a heavy figure. Uh, that's because she, all her parts are solid PVC and the internal joints, which are mostly ball pegs, are, well, double ball pegs, actually, are solid polypropylene plastic. <sighs> However, the PVC is quite heavy. Now, not to skip to articulation or anything, but most of the joints in the figure, it could be the exception of the knees, uh, are this system. Um... Now, as you can see, there is a ball in the body, and then there is a stick with a ball here. This is what's called a double ball peg, or a barbell, because it looks like a barbell, hence the name. So, and the head is actually one of the interesting parts on the a winged one. Now, so that's basically how the articulation for most of this figure is. But I am still going to show it, because that's the whole purpose of the review, is to be objective about the products we're reviewing. Now, I'm going to touch the head here for a minute, so I'm going to decapitate her, because we need to get a closer look, and it's very difficult when she's quite big. So, as you can see, you have the extra set of eyes there, and this is a cool look when she's at the front. I'll show you the drawing in a minute with the interchangeable tongue. Very nicely painted pupil. Uh, all this paint 
is so freaking clean. And you can see a big A there for assembly. And the head is even on the same joints. Uh, yes, it is. And I just popped that off. Uh, as you can see, it's on the very same joints. So there we go. Nope, nothing's broken. It's just a PVC popping. Because you know, it's, it's, just, it's a socket. So it's like... <laughs> now, the jaw uh, opens traditionally. But each, both the parts are on double ball pegs. Now, the tongue here, I had to do a bit of modding. As you can see, this is a little tongue right here. Now, when I first got this thing, it was jammed in there with paint. Uh, so, there, now, I need not to skip to the accessory or anything, because I'll show you how that goes in a minute, but there's little ridges here. Now, what I did is I got a pair of scissors and shaved them off. And it makes install, installing this piece heck of a lot easier. So, now to pop Mummy's head on. Uh, I need to give a name for this girl. <laughs> I'll probably just call her Atashi, uh, you know, because I'm boring like that. Now, best thing I find to do is, I'm actually going to, actually, you know what, pop the head off for a minute. Now, when I'm installing it, this is just what I do. I like to rotate the jaw parts all the way to the back to give me as much room as possible. And then what I like to do is fumble in there uh, and, um, well, that went in really easy. It is getting a bit easy to install. And then just position the jaws however you want them. Uh, pop the big girl's head on. Pose her to look like she's firing at Gypsy. Hmm. Uh, let me just lower her down a bit. And as you can see, uh, this is a bit ridiculous looking at the moment. As you can see, I'm not used to posing a figure this big. Uh, but you kind of see the effect it goes for here. Very, very SH figure arts like. Now, uninstalling it is easy. Okay. Wow, that actually just fell out. That was anticlimactic. Usually I grab the big spit around here and just yank it out. We're going to install a little tongue. And actually, I will show you that little tongue now. As you can see, this thing has some great little detail for what it is. It's great. Um, so that just installs. Uh, now you probably see the big port in her mouth. That's how that goes in. Uh, so that's great. Uh, right, so, uh, sizing and scaling before we get to the articulation. Now, I did have to do some maintenance on this because my unboxing video, if you haven't seen it, a lot of the joints refused to move and I was actually stressing the, the uh, pegs between the balls in this jaw and one of the feet. Can't remember which one. Uh, and I was concerned, so I knew what to do. I heated them up and bang. And the tail is separate in the package. Now, here it is in scale with Freddy Krueger. Uh, she is about, in a way, seven inches... Uh, seven inches tall in height what she makes it up for is length and mass so height she's all right but mass is where this girl really really shines she is a heavy figure freddie's quite a light figure she's not light she is heavy for what she is i mean she's not mega heavy but when i first got this thing like the clamshell i mean the tail was uninstalled i wonder if i could actually pop it off again yes the tail is a um double wall peg so really when it's packaged she's got a big clamshell and her arms are a little bit loose now unfortunately because the tail acts like a weight she's packaged uh like this just imagine a big plastic bubble over the tail and holding her arms and then you know you've got the loogie in there which is wrapped in its own plastic bag this thing when i when i got it and i i didn't realize it was wrapped in its own plastic bag but it was freaking amazing i will tell you now great care has been taken with this toy or figure sorry so she's there and the little baby sat there on a little platform so that's pretty damn cool. Uh, obviously, you saw I had to heat this up for a while. My water was not boiling, unfortunately. Now, on this, now I'm not going to show you how to pop the tail in because it's pretty much the same principle. But come on. Now, this tail, uh, before we get to articulation, is fucking amazing. It's evil as well. Like, it's not as friendly to grab because of all these spikes. Now, Jobby the Hong actually said this. Now, I've got a bit of slop here. But this actually does look in some ways like it's glowing. Obviously, it's not re mega realistic because it's just paint. This is just a figure, a plastic figure. But they did the best that they could, and it looks good for what it is. And I don't know if you can see this, but there's loads of them. Actually, you can. The camera's picking up very well. There's loads of them all over her back here. <sighs> so that is friggin' amazing. Now, articulation. Uh, she actually shares something with Godzilla 2014. 
Now, um, the jaws are on their own double ball pegs, so you can splay them open and you can even have the jaw do the traditional open like a raw. Um, obviously, getting these parts lined up is a little tricky. As you can see, that went together quite nicely. So you can do that and close it shut. The head uh, can go that far, It's but combining it with the other joint, which is, since it's a barbell, you can shift it, you can get some very organic left and right looking poses. For the best that you can, for the best of what the sculpt will allow, it will go up quite nicely and down quite nicely. And of course it will rotate because it's on that barbell. Same for this joint. Uh, actually it shifts because both the ball joints are moving. So you can get her looking fairly well up and you can even get her looking fairly well down. Keep in mind you are going to have that, which is not great. But do remember, had this been SH Monster Arts been doing it, it will be a lot seamless. But no, this is Necker, which is a domestic company. Honestly, I don't expect anyone else to do this. Because I think this is the best This is the best type of figure we've got for what it is. Now the arms, you think they want to pin the socket. Uh, like this, where there's a hinge in there. No, she has double ball pegs in the shoulder. So you, she can go like this. She can go like this, and she can, of course, rotate. Of course, it's a little bit loose because of how heavy it is. The elbows, the same type of joint. Like that, rotate, and, well, somewhat bend. The wrists are also on the same joints. <laughs> yeah, this, this girl's got a lot of the same joints, really. The hands are a little bit restricted. That's my only real gripe. The mid torso, however, is a most restrictive joint. But surprisingly, I really don't care. Because the rest of the figure looks so good. Um, let me just get the arms out of the way here. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't really go side to side, which is a bit of a complaint. But she's got this big meaty part here. It doesn't go up and down that much either. It does a bit, but which is subtle enough. But it's mainly for rotating. Which is a shame that it doesn't do so much, but honestly, it doesn't bother me. And if there's one thing that, you know, that things can bother me pretty easily. Especially when a figure doesn't move that much. I will mod the hell out of it to make it work more. Like with Scarface, I hold out the double ball peg in his stomach. Like, because he has a very similar joint, which is a diaphragm. Uh, I hold it out in north and the waist one so that he can crunch forward a lot more. Um... Because Scarface is known for doing those poses. But with this girl, I'm not going to do it. It doesn't bother me. Now, the legs are, again, barbell joints, double ball pegs. Common theme here with this. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. But they are on the same joint. And just like Godzilla, um, they're... Ah, oh, God, they do move out to the side quite nicely, actually. When you get to them, it's a bit of a fecker to do. Oh, I forgot to mention, she does have the scars from Crimson Typhoon from the Thundercar formation, along with this Celtic rune pattern, which is quite cool. So the legs can go out that far. <sighs> they can rotate up here. These are actually very tight joints, uh, and they rotate, so, you know. Now, the knees are on your hinge and swivel, so they rotate, and they hinge. The feet, double ball pegs again. They go that far forward, that far back. They rotate. And they pivot. The pivot is not the best, but the legs are spread. It, the spread on the legs isn't their best either. Uh, she says the same problem with Godzilla, where the foot pivoting outward is ironically better than it pivoting inward. But it is enough to get her in some cool stances if I just show you uh, the feet. Uh, so you can, when you work with it, you, obviously she's not going to stand like that. She's just going to go like that. But you can get her with her feet posed nicely. Now the tail, this is my this is actually my favourite part of the figure. Well, not really. It's one of the best parts of the figure. It's the best engineered piece. Double ball peg. Double ball peg. Double ball peg. Double ball peg. That one's actually bloody well nicely moving. Another one. And another one. And another one. And another one here. And then we come to the tricycle. So really, now you can't get her doing quite as stupidly flexible poses as reaching around and grabbing Gypsy Danger's arm. That's the best you're going to get. If you want to do it around, right, I'm going to show you here a bit of a faux movie magic. So, um, if you're doing a stop motion, you want to looking like she's grabbing Gypsy. Yeah, you're going to have to do it like this. 
Well, you hold the tail here and pretend it's, and maybe wave it around in front of the camera. So you hold it like this and look like it's grabbing Gypsy. That's the best you can do, because this is, I mean, due to the sculpts, if this thing was a living creature or a much bigger figure, it could probably incorporate all them friggin' joints. And this tail is, there we go. This tail's not really the most cooperative part, and it's very hard to grab as well. But still. So if this thing was real and it was a bigger figure, it would art it would articulate a lot better. But since this is like meant to be scale with seven inch Jaegers, it's not gonna articulate the best. Which but to be honest, again, it doesn't bother me. I and mean, it bothers me a little bit, but you know, it's not enough to make me go out of my way and go mental. Now, the tail, this claw here. First of all, look at those friggin' that friggin' paint job. A lot of people say it's baby blue. I don't know what baby blue is, but I, I mean, I think it's just an American thing. Because <laughs> I'm British, in case you didn't know. But this thing has baby blue in it, so we're going to call it baby blue. Now, uh, <laughs> very tight when I first got it. No, it's not. It's geared. Unfortunately, the top gear didn't really like to engage very well. I don't know what's gone up with that. Uh... So, you grab two of them, and they all go in. Unfortunately, mine's a bit... Well, I don't know what's up with mine. It, the gears are a bit... bit kind of like disengaging, but they're supposed to fully all work. But, as you can see, so it opens very nicely. Uh, unfortunately, though, and it worked really well yesterday. I don't know what's up with it now. As you can see, the gears are just slipping out of place. So it's a bit annoying. That was a bit of a kick in the balls. So, if you kind of, like, grab two of them and do it, it will work better, but, you know... <laughs> it is only PVC, so it's not, I think maybe if this was made out of a harder material, it would have worked better. I don't know, that's probably, that's, wow, that's a complaint. Uh, it worked really well yesterday, I don't know what's up with it now. Um, it doesn't mind, I don't really care. I can just pose them individually, you know. <sighs> oh, I forgot to mention, uh, the, uh, now, the paint on the inside of the mouth... There's a lot of nice dark blues and baby blues and teals and whatnot. It's a very nice fading look to it. This thing's great. Um, wow, this review's turning up quite a lot, quite long. <laughs> Big figure, to be fair. I'm covering a lot here. And also with the arms, because these are the fold-up wings, even the membranes are painted very nicely. There's The paint on this thing is exquisite. Uh, now, to compare her with other figures, I really wish I brought my Gypsy Danger now, but I didn't expect to be getting this thing. Um, here she is with Freddy Krueger again. I'm going to do a few more figures just to kind of make the table a bit more filled up. Corporal Dwayne Hicks, who is an average size human. He's an average size clone. He's actually taller than the Jackie Haley Freddy. Come on, camera, focus. Come on. Uh, a Predator, specifically the AVP body. In this case, the ultimate Scarface, well, my custom Scarface, because that thing is custom painted. Yeah, Scarface is fecking huge. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put him there. Unfortunately, I am going to need to do the nail polish treatment on that. So, there's that. And then, where would we be without this little pip squeak? <laughs> so, <coughs> sorry, she's pretty big. Actually, I'm going to get a few more figures out. Uh, we're going to get the classic Freddy. His foot's gone a bit skew at the moment. Let me just sort that out. Uh, sorry. Ah, okay, okay. So this guy is actually slightly modified because he busted ages ago, but you know what? He still works and articulates and all that. So he's a little bit taller. Um, and we'll get Jason. Actually, we'll get Newt as well. Now, Jason's mask is in the bag at the moment because I took a few things with me. I was going to take some photos, but I've just not got around to doing it. So, you know... And ironically, Freddy and Jason are the same height due to the fact that I had to fix Freddy so his torso is a bit bigger. Now, Newt's actually a five inch, uh, surprisingly. Necker's, well, I think they're one of Necker's first, I think, if not, Necker's first five inch figure that's articulated. So you get a various range of figures there. And you can see she, well, obviously she fits in terribly with them because these are not Jaegers. If these were Jaegers, she would fit in a lot better. Um... I wish I had a Jaeger. I will do a, maybe another video comparing all my Pacific Rim figures. Obviously, I don't have many. I only have three Jaegers, which are Ultimate Gypsy Danger, Ultimate Strike Eureka, and Tacit Ronin. 
That's all I have for Pacific Rim, because most of them are Kaiju, and the Kaiju have become very expensive and hard to find. <sighs> the only ones I've really seen in stores are this one, the flying version, and Mutavor. All the others on eBay are either being knocked off or sold for stupid prices. Mostly sold for stupid prices. Especially Leatherback, her partner in crime. So, it's a bit depressing. Well, I wouldn't say depressing, it's a bit discouraging, really. It's a bit De miserable really it's sad because you know you want a freaking cool kaiju figure yeah, they're fucking expensive as all hell oh hey I forgot I brought this guy with me for the novelty here she is with Springtrap yes he's got a much better head sculpt now and I do like this head sculpt uh, so yeah he's actually a 5 inch Um, Jason Voorhees Tombstone now, obviously, to get these guys in scale with people, um, the people would have to be about that tall. Now, I've got to cut now, uh, so I'm going to finish here because I've got a few things to do. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys later on. Peace.